Welcome back to Retail Therapy on the Sunday Scaries podcast feed. My name's Will DeFreeze. My co-host with me, Barrett Dudley. Barrett, how's it going today? It's going all right. Um, I'm just over here prepping for the podcast, trying to close down some of my 477 tabs. So this computer does not levitate off this desk and fly out the room so that I am able to, to pull things up in a timely manner and put them on the screen. Because right now, this puppy's humming. I can't believe I'm actually asking this question <laughs> in a serious manner. But did you seriously have to close 477 tabs? Because uh, I, I don't think I have 477 open. Okay, I think but that, it wouldn't be a, that that's, crazy. That's an exaggeration. If but... you had a bunch of different windows open and you had full tabs going, yeah. I think you could reach those numbers if yeah, you really I mean, wanted we're, to. We are, there's no question that I'm in triple digits, right? This at the moment between, you know, because I've got two Chromes going, right? I've got my work mm -hmm. Chrome and I've got my, my, my personal Chrome. And, and, you know, there, there's just, there's a lot flying around, a lot of Google Drive stuff open. You know, I, they, these shopping tabs, surely they don't take up much, but then you start getting the refret, the tabs that are trying to like maybe play some videos or some ads at the bottom. You can't stop that. You can't do anything about that. So you, you know, you, you constantly are in a state of whittling down and that's without fail on, on at these recording sessions. It's just, it, it you know? I mean, I, I operate in a completely different way than you. You're just, you're, you are blank slate all times. All times, all yeah. times. Right now I have three tabs open and this is a normal occurrence for me. That's I, a nice way to live. That's I a like nice to, way to live. click out of my windows. I like to, if I need to revisit something, I need my brain to say, hey, Will, go back and see that tab that you were looking at like three days ago. That's how I know that I really like something. Right, right. Or I am also just an over bookmarker. I will bookmark anything okay. in a folder titled buy and then that will get lost and fall into the abyss until it's sold out when I revisit it four months later. <laughs> <laughs> this uh, titled buy, B U Y. B U I, yeah. yeah. See, this this is why, and this is a this is a good example of why your apartment is always photograph ready, and my <laughs> house is never photograph ready. <laughs> well, I I run a very tight ship when it comes to the cleanliness surrounding my apartment, and yeah. not the cleanliness, but I will say the organization, the organization, yeah. the neatness. Yeah, you're 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 Seinfeld esque in that manner. You Every know? morning I wake up and I organize. Every night before I go to bed, I organize. Wow. Okay. I just I'm I'm I I can't help but organize. Yeah. Uh, I'm kind of distracted over here myself because I just saw some news from 20 minutes ago. Mm. Uh, Nylon Mag has said that uh, uh, newly single Pete Davidson will be joining Kaylee Cuoco in a new romantic comedy on Peacock called Meet Cute. And while I don't know the <laughs> actual plot line of meet cute starring these two uh -huh. i do have a little bit of a worry that this is stepping on some toes of a potential romantic comedy that i have written in my head oh i have not written it on paper so mm -hmm. it won't be released anytime soon but i do have some romantic comedy ideas in my head that have yet to get out all right and you th and one of them revolves around uh, a potential meet cute it sounds like yes yeah i have several written down in my notes app of romantic comedies that i've come up with over the years there's one that i wrote down and i put an asterisk on it because i was really excited about the idea and then i saw it about four days later and i couldn't remember the actual plot line of the title that i did mm -hmm. Have you ever messed around with the screenwriting like program? I can't remember what it's called right no. now. Like, oh, Final Draft. Final no. Draft, I believe. I have not. No. I think I, I oftentimes I think about like like writing a screenplay or something. Not like I'm thinking about, you know what I should do, write a screenplay. No, I think about the act of writing a screenplay or like pulling an idea from your head. Um, you know, like the memory fluid in Harry Potter, which I can't remember the name of right now. You know, you pull this strand and you want to put it down and like, then you're just, you're faced with a, with, with a blank screen and you have to start it. And I got, I got nothing. I don't know how you start a screenplay. That's why that must be the first class you take. If you go to like radio TV film school, but just, how, just how to start a blank screenplay slate. 101. Like, what do you, what do you, what, how do you start? Yeah. I mean, I think that's the big question that's, for that's a lot the of tough things. Part, right? Yeah. For me, the most yeah. of the time I like, if I'm writing anything, which I hardly, I feel like I never write anymore. When, when I was doing writing every single day, I mostly would just start writing, see how it started shaping up. And if I needed to go back to the beginning and, and shift the very beginning, I would do that. But I found I just needed to start writing wherever my brain decided to pick up from last time. Right, right. That ability to just like say like I'm starting and put, put something down I think is, is very key. I think starting Washed Media actually set me back on the writing front because I no longer had to answer to anybody when it came mm -hmm. to writing. And mm -hmm. I think... 
the obligation made me a better writer because I was always just, well, Will, it's part of your job. Like your job is to literally write every day, go write. And so it took the pressure off of making sure it was good because I was like, well, just another day at the, at the factory, yeah, at the page view factory. Oh yeah. <sighs> I need, I need these companies to start hitting me up before they start doing rom-coms about meet cutes with Pete Davidson. I feel like I need to be in on these meetings. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't think the shit that I talk about Peacock is, uh, if that's gotten back to anyone at <laughs> Peacock, then I don't think they're going to want me in the writer's room for that. Uh, also to that end, I mean, like what, what's your, give me odds that this movie with Pete Davidson and Kaylee Cuoco is any good. Well, uh, considering I saw the movie with Owen Wilson and Jennifer Lopez about them getting married on stage at a concert, <laughs> uh, I can say that I hope it's better than that movie. Does that is that one feature Maluma or Jay Balvin? As, uh, as I think her, Jay Balvin as her first husband, right? See the Brazilian one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I it, think it's yeah, Jay, Jay Balvin. Balvin. Jay Balvin. That's it. yeah. Uh, honestly, I, it wasn't as bad of a movie as I thought it was originally going to be, but it was still a really bad movie. Yeah. But if you got J Lo and uh, Owen Wilson, it can it can catch a Sunday afternoon watch while mm -hmm. you kind of fall in and out of sleep I, I, on the couch. I feel that. I feel that. Before we get started today, I have some major major announcements. Uh, first and foremost, we have a new YouTube channel that all of these retail therapy podcasts are living on these days. This will be the second one up. Uh, if you're looking for it, I will say right now we don't have a good URL because YouTube makes you wait 30 days before you can get a good custom URL. Mm. Once that 30 days is up, I'm going to get the best custom URL you've ever seen. I don't know what it is yet. But it's going to be really good. Another announcement. And this is kind of like, this is kind of ground floor stuff. I'm not trying to put this out there to everybody right now. But, you know, to the people that are listening, I want you to know. I've started an Instagram. It's at retail.pod. Wow. And it's got somehow 80 followers without me even mentioning it really at all and or doing anything. That just shows the power of the algorithm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, if you want to go follow that, who knows? Who knows where this might go? But go, go make that happen. Uh, and finally, I do listener companions all the time for this, these episodes. They exist at willdefreeze.substack.com. It's got links to anything we talked about. It's got all of our wish list items. It's got, you know, photos of stuff that is pertinent to this podcast. Go check those out. Again, that's also in the description of this episode. But before we really get into the meat of today's episode, let's hear from our friends over at FitBod. These summer months make you realize a few things, Barrett. That either that you're in really good shape because you took care of yourself all year or that you're just kind of spiraling because of... Uh, all the, all the eating and drinking that you're doing through these summer months. The days are getting shorter. Social calendar is filling up. Work's probably getting a little more hectic again now that you people on the East Coast aren't getting your, your half-day Fridays soon. That's right. It's easy to fall out of good habits like exercising when fun season turns into busy season, but putting off working out now leads to the same old New Year's resolution to get back in shape. And FitBot's smart workout app scientifically tailors an exercise program to your goals, equipment, and schedule so you can keep your full calendar and your summer gains. Uh, FitBod's a phenomenal app. They've got great video. It's, they've recently redone and rebranded everything. They have HD video tutorials. There are so many good things about this app, but the best thing is that it tailors the workouts to be better than your last and to be different than your last. And that's important. Their smart workout app creates a custom dynamic exercise program based on your goals, experience, and equipment. And then it varies your routine to avoid overtraining. And their algorithm uses data and analytics to scientifically build your best next workout and maximize results. You can see your muscle usage, recovery achievements, workout streaks right in the app. You're in control with workouts designed for you to get exactly what you need out of them. This is so much more convenient and way cheaper than a personal trainer. And it's a workout program that works on all of your devices. Talking iOS, Android, and it even it even integrates with all every I mean all those apps that you have out there. You're trying to close your rings, guess what? It's going to help you do that. Keep your workout momentum going. Get personalized workouts from FitBod that get tougher as you do. Get 25% off your subscription or try out the app for free. And you sign up now at fitbod.me slash scaries. Again, that's 25% off your subscription or try it free at fitbod.me slash scaries. Let's get controversial here. Actually, I don't even know if it's going to be controversial. If it's anything like some of the stuff we talked about on this podcast, you and I might just agree. Okay. All right. um, Wall Street Journal Magazine. Yeah. It's an all-time magazine uh, to, to hold in your hands. Are you familiar with this? Uh, yeah, the, you know, sort of. It's got nice, it's got nice soft pages, almost yeah. like a matte finish on it. I always enjoy having one in my hands, but I don't subscribe to the Wall Street Journal, so it's few and far between that I can actually do Didn't it. you used to subscribe to the Wall Street Journal? I subscribe to the Sunday 
New York Times. The, okay, okay. All right. That's, uh, that must be what I'm thinking of. Because if there's ever a day that I don't need to be sitting on my phone reading the New York Times, it's definitely a Sunday. I like that you get the magazine with it. You get uh, all the different sections with it that you get on the weekends. It's just kind of nice to get that. In, in the early days of like men's Instagram Ooh. kind of influencer yeah. fashion type stuff, it was always essential to get like a top down shot with like- Had to your espresso or your latte with like, you know, a perfectly kind of angled and cornered mm -hmm. Wall Street journal mm -hmm. on, but you on have to some be careful type of because beautiful wooden or table clothed, uh, you know, piece of furniture. Doesn't, I think the Wall Street Journal just releases a weekend edition. So if you post it on Sunday, that means you're behind on the markets. Mm. Like you're already, you're already behind the eight ball here. Oof. Someone called me out for that one time and I was like, okay, finance bro. <laughs> like I don't, I didn't take this photo today. It's just an aesthetic photo that's going up here. Yeah. yeah. Well, recently the magazine's been uh, actually shown up on my, I think they've been showing up on my feed a lot more. They've even either been posting more uh -huh. or they're a friend of the algorithm. And uh, this one struck a chord. And the second I saw this, I was like, oh, this is a retail therapy topic. It says the great generational divide, top sheets versus none. Of course, they are talking about when you sleep and you're betting. Barrett, I have to ask you, do you use a top sheet? Yeah, of course. <laughs> okay. Who, who does okay. not? Who, <laughs> okay. Who among us is out here not using a top sheet? If you're asking who is raw dogging their comforter, I can confirm <laughs> it is me. <laughs> Okay, I mean, this is I'm I'm I, look. This is not the first time that I've heard of this debate, uh, and 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 even if you go online to uh, to a brand that we've talked about before that I've recently made a purchase from, Parachute, for mm -hmm. example. Yeah, and you go and you click on this on a sheet set, you have to add the top sheet. See, so that this, just shows this, you everything this, you need this, to know. This is you know there there are clearly enough you know now that to me this just feels like a way to get you to pay more. Yeah. Like, oh, hey, we don't even have to include the top sheet anymore. These bozos out here are sleeping with no top sheets. If I started um, a sheet company today, <laughs> there is no way that I'm including a top sheet. I'm definitely charging more for a top sheet. So you got you to gotta, you gotta add the top sheet into your set. It is not included uh, on, on these parachute sheet sets. Um, okay. Can I ask yeah, you? The, the, the concept of, of, of no top sheet is, is just a little strange to me for for a couple of reasons but what are, what are you going to say what well gonna i was ask? going to ask you uh, do you make your bed every morning um i i would say i half make the bed every morning okay i pull everything back up in like a more you know aesthetically pleasing way but i'm not like retucking the sheets and like making sure that all the the corners are are aligned but and you like at making least sure that it's perfect you put your paws on the top sheet and you pull that thing up every morning i do yes okay yep. okay i see I, as someone who has the sole responsibility of making our bed every morning, as I am the final person to get out of bed in the morning, including my dog, I <laughs> love making the bed because I don't have to worry about the top sheet. I don't have to do anything with it. Yeah. I don't understand why I need the top sheet. I already have two top sheets that are folded together with feathers in between them because I have a duvet cover that covers my comforter. Okay. So here's my question for you. How often are you washing your duvet cover? Uh, because that is now that is now serving as the primary point of contact with your body. Oh, for sure. In addition to the to the fitted sheet, like these are the two pieces sandwiching you while you toss and you turn and you sweat and you sleep. So, like this now needs to be washed as often or nearly as often as the sheets and the pillowcases themselves. Because I'm scared of actually just saying my answer, I'm going to ask <laughs> you first what you think is an acceptable amount of time to keep. Your sheets on your bed before you need to wash them. Okay. What I is mean, a my, what is a normal time frame? Okay. I think ideal is changing them once a week. Okay. I think that ex I think that pushing that to ten ish days is acceptable. And then depending on how cool or hot or sweaty of a sleeper you are, two weeks is max. Okay. But I think ideal for 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 the the to to be the most comfortable, crisp, and clean. You know, the three key C's there, I think it's once a week. The furthest that I go is two weeks. Yeah. That is the furthest because every two weeks we have someone come to our house. They do the cleaning stuff that we don't want to do. They're in and out in an hour. And one of the things that they do is they always change the sheets over for us. Yeah. Will we do that on our own within a week? Maybe. Do we sometimes just wait the exact two weeks every Tuesday and just do it? Yeah, we do. So I, I wait about two weeks most of the time, but I will say that we do change it out every once in a while, especially given that we are 
uh, sleepers with a dog on the bed. But I've yeah. become a hotter sleeper these days. We got during a sale over Memorial Day. I decided we decided to go online. We went to the company store, a very popular website out there for betting, and we bought the closest thing we could find to what we would consider to be like hotel bedding. Uh -huh. Your pillows your comforter. And now we have a very heavy comforter that is so heavy that I get really hot at, at night. And I feel like we might need to, to have a smaller or a, a less aggressive comforter moving forward, uh, you know, to mix in every once in a while. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's an age thing or, or what, but I'm definitely a hot sleeper. And this actually reminds me of, I mean, th th this might be something that I, that I have to add to the, to the wish list or, or, or put on an insane gift type of list, but but it tracks here. Uh, th this was brought to my attention by a, a food influencer named Gabi. Uh, you might know her on Instagram at What's Gabi Cooking. Uh, but she and her husband recently made this splurge purchase from Eight Sleep. It's called the Pod Three Cover, and it is like an active cooling comforter that can have different okay. uh, temperatures on either side. Okay. It tracks all of your sleep, so it eliminates the need for like an Aura Ring or an Apple Watch, and delivers that data to your computer, or your smartphone. And here's the, here's another an additional thing that I never even thought about that's pretty cool. It's also got like built-in alarm stuff that's like n that's non-audio alarm, so it'll like pulse to wake you up. Basically. Interesting. Um, this does not come at at a small cost. Uh, it's retails for twenty three hundred dollars, although it is on sale right now for twenty two hundred and forty five dollars. Wow. Okay. So nice we got little, the fifty dollar nice discount. Fifty dollar discount uh, going on right there. But Love like, to see that. But but this is you know heading towards late late thirties. This is the type of thing that I'm like, oh man, boy, this could really change the game for me. So because uh, yeah, I mean, I, I sleep real hot. Like like it it's you know, I. I just don't see the need for it. I'm going to read what the, what the Wall Street Journal magazine said about this. They said, to its fans, a top sheet is an essential part of a made bed. A crisp, clean buffer between the body and the blanket. To its detractors, that same top sheet is a superfluous distraction that is a pain to arrange in the morning and annoyingly bunches around one's feet at night. See, they are speaking my language here. They're, they're, they're talking to the right person. Team Top Sheet argues that it's more hygienic, more proper, and just more correct to use one. Team None responds that it's more efficient to skip it. And if you change your duvet cover regularly, regularly, it's just as clean. Many Europeans just use a duvet cover, which that it, makes it, me it, ask, is the lad in me just jumping out here? Probably. It does feel like a very European thing. The, look, I want to go back to the duvet cover, though, because I think the biggest thing here is that I know if I removed the top sheet, I would feel the need to wash the duvet cover more. And washing a duvet cover is like a top five worst chore because it, you you throw this thing into the wash and it like eats up everything else that it's in the wash with and Swallows then, you, and it. then it, you go into the dryer and all the stuff that gets stuck inside won't dry and so you constantly are pulling it out every 20 minutes to like remove the pillowcases or whatever that gets stuck inside and even if you just go solo even if you wash the duvet cover solo it still like knots itself up and like takes oh. forever to get dry and then you got to do the whole song and dance where you're like putting it back on the actual comforter and you're doing little Dude. tie tabs okay. on the corners. Thank you for bringing this and up. And it's just, it's an, it's all, it's a top five worst chore. And that, that like the uh, eliminating the need to have to wash that as often is enough to sell me on a top sheet. It's a very common trope about the, uh, about like folding a fitted sheet. Like that well, is the right. thing. Yes. That's but yeah. How, how, <laughs> you know, comforters have somehow escaped being the pain point of that is insane to me because who cares about folding a sheet, it, especially yeah. a, a fitted sheet. You can just bundle that you thing can, yeah, up and yeah. throw it down and no one even cares because right. it's on the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> but when it comes to doing a comforter, I mean, you got to do, do that thing inside out. You got to tie the corners. You got to flip it over, which t it takes a lot of, uh, a lot of, you know, co coordination between you and, and the person doing it. Or if you're doing it alone, like, good luck getting that thing flipped over. Yeah. And then you got to button up the bottom of the... Say bye to an hour of your life. Dude, buttoning the bottom <laughs> for me is my least favorite part. And it's mainly because Sally and I are both very slow at it. And so it's just... <laughs> it's not like I know that she'll go from the other side and, and catch up with me. It's just torturous. And so I just... I think that duvets don't get enough credit for being like just an absolute pain in the ass when it comes to sheets. Yeah, I do, I do respect just the, what you're saying, though, and the, the other argument that this is easier to make the bed and it's just a little it's less to deal with and, and you don't deal with all the bunching and stuff. And 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 the idea that a top sheet is, is kind of somewhat unnecessary, I'm, you know, I, I can see the point there. 
What's dumb though is that like when I go to a hotel, I'm like, oh, this bed is so great. It's I, probably I was, because there's a freaking top sheet. Yeah. And also, I was going to bring that up for somebody that's trying who is on a constant journey to make their bed feel like it's a high end hotel bed. Like, am I just com- completely missing by you, not having you, a top sheet? You might be, and and that's I was going to say like, the, is there anything better than like going into a nice hotel and just getting into those perfectly ironed, crisp, layered? white sheets no you you posted a great tiktok of some guy that was decked out in like a terry white cloth robe uh and Mm -hmm. and you know smart looking glasses and he was steaming and ironing the hell out of his sheets i want that guy needs to start a business where he just goes and does this for people that bed was the most inviting bed i've ever seen the perfectly you know just aligned and ironed and neat pillowcases resting atop the iron fitted sheet. I mean, it was beautiful. That is something that's like, you have like a list of things that you just like put in the back of your head and you're like, someday if I'm ever wealthy enough, Mm -hmm. these are things that are happening for me. A cold plunge pool in my bathroom. Ironed sheets (laughs) are like, are, are, are near the top of that list for me. Dude, let's just start doing it. Let's just, let's just make, I just complained about putting on a duvet cover. You think I'm going to iron my sheets? That's fair. Yeah, that's fair. It sounds cool in theory, but like, I don't think either of us are going to make that happen anytime (laughs) soon. (sighs) It looked, it looked beautiful though. Uh, It did look beautiful. And so many people responded and said, this is like so American psycho. And I'm like, yeah, but he he stopped listening to Huey Lewis in the news and started listening to retail therapy instead. He's like, no, I got to get in. I got to start ironing this stuff. Do you like Marie Kondo? (laughs) (laughs) That's so dumb. (laughs) Uh, I mean, I don't have too much else on sheets other than if anyone has any, any, like what I, the point that I'm at in my life now, in my sheet journey, in my bed journey, is that I need the next step. I need the next upgrade. We've upgraded our sheets. We've upgraded our, you know, like I said, our duvet. We've upgraded our comforter, our pillows, everything like that. I need the stuff that I don't even know is out there at this point. I need like this, the sprays that you put on, on the bed. I need... What, what do you think he was spraying on the pillowcases? I don't know. I think that there are like room sprays that you can do, but I, I like you can't do it with like a perfume or like uh, some type of fragrance like that because... That's just going to be too aggressive to right. sleep on. Like, like we have, we have like one of the Le Labo room sprays that mm-hmm. you can kind of like spritz around a room, but I don't, I wouldn't spray it directly on my pillowcase. No, no, no. You know I what had, I mean? No, I remember like when I was really young, like a teenager, um, I was dating a girl and we were dating long distance for a little bit, as you do. Sure. And uh, I remember she sprayed my pillow one time with her perfume as like a nice like, oh, like, remember me. And I went to bed that night and I was like, I can't sleep. Like, this pillow smells way too strong. This is not going to work. Yeah. You were just just absolutely inundated with, yeah, with, Abercr- with Abercrombie in, Fierce. I was going to say, I was suffocating in Victoria's Secret. <laughs> Victoria's Secret. <laughs> like, just dying on my pillow, like waking up smelling like it, not realizing it. The one from the uh, the pink side of the store. Exactly. A little, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, the, the sporty offshoot. I can see the bottle now, yeah, which yeah. is not a good thing. <laughs> oh, before we get into more, get to hear from one of my most favorite sponsors, a sponsor that I've been uh, really taking advantage of lately. Talking about my friends over at First Leaf. I hate shopping for wine in the store. My move when I shop for wine in the store is that I go to the, the red wine section. I look for a bottle with a type of bird on it, usually a duck. And then I buy that bottle. Usually it works out pretty well, but the times that it doesn't, it's just terrible. And I know nothing about wine. I don't know what tannins are. I don't know like how long the legs should be like staying on your glass when you do that little swirly thing. I don't even know why I'm swirling it. I just swirl. But that's why First Leaf is here. They do the hard work for you. They make it simple to discover new wines you'll love without the hit or miss. And they sample over 10,000 wines a year from around the world and they select only the finest bottles. They take time to learn what you like and what you don't. And then they send you world-class wines tailored to your taste. I recently got a box in the mail. I got a lot of reds in it because, as you know, we're kind of getting into, I mean, it's still hot down here, but we're getting into fall. And I want to find out and hone in on the reds that I've been loving. I got a a Pinot lately, and I have to say, usually I'm a big Pinot fan. Did not like it. Mm. Um, But it was very easy for me to go on my account, express that I did not like it, and now I know for sure that they're going to tailor something a little bit better to my taste next time. The other five wines in that box, absolutely loved them. They were phenomenal. There were wines that I never would have thought to get in the store, and they were wines that were kind of out of my normal spectrum, which my spectrum isn't that wide. It's usually <laughs> just Pinot to Cab and call it a day. 
Um, I mean, first leave, even if you're happy with the wine that you, uh, if you're not happy with the wine that you receive, first leave will credit you for another. And it does not get simpler than that. They take time to learn what you like and what you don't. And then they send world-class wines tailored to your taste. So it's just make it, it, they make it so easy for you. Sign up today and you'll get your first six bottles for $39.95 plus free shipping. Go to tryfirstleaf.com slash scaries. That's T-R-Y-F-I-R-S-T-L-E-A-F dot com slash Gary to get your first six bottles for $39.95 plus free shipping. Again, that's tryfirstleaf.com slash scaries. Actually, Barrett, on the uh, same note, we have a little trend popping up. Mm. I don't know how popular this trend is, uh, but it has to do with martinis. And anytime something martini... Uh, you know, adjacent comes up. I got to talk. about We got to talk about that. Yeah, that's right. Turns out pickle martinis are trying to rear their heads and uh, trying to enter the ring a little bit. Trying, you, to, trying to knock off the espresso. I, I just I don't know. Something call me crazy. Call me crazy. But I, there's something that tells me that pickle martinis will not dethrone <laughs> the espresso martini. Well, uh, you know, until pickle juice gives you a shocking jolt of energy to go along with the, uh, you know, well, instead, the, the, the pickle alcohol. juice gives you something cool, which is just a puffy face, <laughs> which is what everyone wants when they're drinking. Yeah. You know, the whole thing about, you know, pickle pickle juice has like a lot of electrolytes and all that type of stuff. This article on Bustle even mentions that. I don't, like, I don't know. That just, that, that, that alone kind of weirds me out. Like, I'm not trying to like have a Pedialyte or a Gatorade martini. Well, so the other day... And I've done this once before, but the other day uh, I, we received some stuff in the mail from a company called the Pretentious Pickle Company. Uh, I must have talked about pickles in some manner. Our old intern absolutely hated pickles. Shout out, Abby. And uh, they sent us some pickles. I finished the pickles very quickly. <laughs> as that's what I do. I, I devour pickles. <laughs> but I, I was sitting there and I, I admittedly had a little too much to drink on Saturday. I started at Matt's El Rancho where I had three frozen margaritas and I finished at the Austin FC game where I had uh, enough IPAs that I don't remember how many IPAs I had. So I woke up on Sunday feeling pretty bad and I saw a jar <laughs> sitting there, an empty jar in my fridge because I was going to pickle something else in the brine as it was so good. Okay. I thought, you know what? It's time. I'm drinking this pickle juice. Yeah. I'm doing the hangover cure of drinking the pickle juice and uh, I don't know if it worked or not. <laughs> I think I might have been beyond the point of return. I was about to say, uh, no ba based on the description of, of the prior night, you may have been too far gone. There is something to be said, and I don't know if it, it, it fully cured my hangover for the long term. Uh -huh. There is something to be said about like the, the minute following. I felt so satiated after I drank the pickle juice that yeah. like I didn't need to drink anything else. I was no longer thirsty, and I was very happy with that. But now they're making pickle martinis. Yeah. Well, so, you know, as, as this kind of column goes on to say, it, it's basically just a spin on a dirty martini. Mm -hmm. You know, if you like a dirty martini, you're, you're using the brine from the olives. It's the same gist. You're just using the brine from the pickles. So it, it's, it's, it's not a real stretch. You know, no. it's, not, it's, it's not a totally newfangled concept. Uh, but you do have to like that kind of extra brightness of a pickle. And you have to want that to go along with your... With your martini. And I, I think um, for me, it just reminds me a little bit too much of like the classic pickleback shots, which which were uh, a favorite for a while at a, at a particular bar here in Austin. So I don't know. It's it's not really for me now. But I also I also eschew dirty martinis in the favor of generally ones that are brighter and more citrusy. So so the, the, the brine is not really for me anyway, in this case, I have definitely taking my foot off the gas when it comes to a dirty martini. I, I don't enjoy the saltiness like I used to. And I think it's because I've started to enjoy just classic martinis so much that I don't need that salt yeah. and that different flavor to cut the liquor to cut for the, me. Right, right. And yeah. it, I'm, glad that I, I'm glad that I had that phase in my life. I'm glad that I learned about martinis through the dirty martini. And I'm glad that it, it became a staple in my rotation because of that. But I just don't need it. What? And I think the idea of pickles, I was going to say the exact same thing about <clears throat> picklebacks. I've never been a huge pickleback person. And that's mainly because I don't, I love pickles so much. I don't need to drink them at night. Mm. I don't need to possibly ruin this for myself when we go crazy on pickleback some night. I wake up the next day and the last thing I want to even think about is a pickle. I don't want that in my life. I like pickles too much. My my guess also, when you were big on dirty martini phase, mm -hmm. were you drinking vodka martinis? I was. Yeah. That, I was. That, that, that's the other piece of it. When, when you, if if you switch it up or if you, enjoy a, a gin martini and you start drinking that with good gin, whether it's botanist or Hendrix or 
you know, whatever mm-hmm. else is out there. There's a ton of good ones. The the gin is really good and flavorful. That's like what you can can kind of appreciate. Whereas like in a vodka martini, you're just drinking vodka yeah. basically. Yeah. So you kind doesn't of doesn't really matter. You need almost that, and that's something weird. to kind of to, to kind of cut it unless you just love ice cold vodka, which I can't hate on either. And you've but, just you've just completely taken my trajectory of everything though. I was doing that exactly that. And now I drink gin martinis way more than I drink anything else because I like the taste of the gin. I don't like anything dirty and I don't really like much going on in it. I just kind of like the gin. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I did want to shout out. Let's see, what's what's her name? I'll I'll, I'll bring it back over here so I can uh, make sure to credit her. But there there is a TikTok here uh, showcased from Elizabeth Minchilli, and she's on TikTok and and she does her how to make a uh, a, a dirty pickled gin martini. I just really like her. She's like approachable Martha Stewart. Basically. Do you follow her? No, I don't. Oh, you but, just but okay. I watched this video. Right, and, she's getting to follow. And I, I was just, you know, it was a vibe. Yeah. I mean, I, the last two posts on the Sunday Scaries feed have both been Martha Stewart posts. And I don't <laughs> think, I think I'm going to meme her until she acknowledges the memeing. Like, <laughs> I, I think I'm going to just tag her in every single one that I do and hope that one day she reaches out and says something. Um, we did, I, I think Scaries is finally hitting the cr- coastal grandmothers. Yeah. Which is why I'm trying to Ooh. hone in on Martha so okay. much. Okay. All right. Um, Ariana Huffington actually tagged Scaries in a meme the other day. Wow. I tried to hit her back with some emojis and yeah. she just hearted it. Okay. But she looked at it. So like I'm on her radar. That's well, I mean, how was she supposed to respond to em- emojis? I don't know. <laughs> I bricked it. I bricked sliding into Ariana Huffington's DMs. You didn't say, hey, Ariana. What am I supposed to say? Hey, Ariana, would you like to come on the podcast? Like what am I? She's not going to come on the podcast. She might. No. She no. might. She might. Ne- you never know. You really never know. All right. Well, the line the, the 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 line of dialogue is open. So maybe I'll hit her up. If and, she listens, maybe she listens as well. This is her invitation to to come on and So and, I shouldn't have sent her know, three and, skull emojis and said, "Damn, I'm dead, <laughs> queen. Thanks for the tag." <laughs> That's not what I said. That would have been bad. Uh, if, if she would like to come on and and shoot the uh the coastal breeze as it were. I mean, By the way, you know how Elizabeth here on the TikTok, mm-hmm. you know how she uh, makes her potato chips? How? She gets a fancy bowl. And then she goes to the grocery store and buys her favorite potato chips. There you go. That's what I'm talking about, dude. She's our queen. I, I think we need to get her on. She's approachable. Now, she would probably come on the podcast. Yeah, yeah. she's great. Yeah. Does and she I, live I, in Italy? I don't, I, I'm not sure. I need to investigate more because she seems to be, like I said, she's kind of giving approachable Martha Stewart vibes. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, but she might, she, she might fit right into like, Coastal Grandma or even Funky Ann Aesthetic, Ant Wave. Oh, I right? forgot about maybe, Ant Wave. Maybe a blend of, of both. Um, I'm and, so glad uh, you have a better memory than me because like <laughs> early retail therapy episodes, those things are gone. Those are, that's, that's fairy dust in my life. So, yeah. <laughs> well, Sally's going to be so annoyed when, I, uh, when we go to Italy next month and I'm like, well, Sally, you got to take a pit stop. I got to go uh, talk to Elizabeth You got to go Minchilli. hang out with Elizabeth Minchilli. Yeah, yeah. sorry. Yeah. I, she's been making some really good uh, cocktails on, on Instagram lately. Yeah. I don't know. I've been trying to get more into Stanley Tucci lately and his show. Mm-hmm. There's just too many commercials. Mm. And like, I don't know. I'm worried that we're like over Tucci-ing everything. I'm worried that like people have latched onto him too much. Yeah. And it ends yeah, two kinda... ways. It's either that we're all just tired of Stanley Tucci or we get him canceled because we're just all prying on his life at this point. And mm-hmm. I don't want I don't want to cancel Tucci. Yeah. Yeah. That would be bad. Should we do – so we have – okay. So we've done pickleback. So we know pickles and whiskey is an acceptable combination. We can assume based on your very you know, sound logic that pickles and vodka or – yeah, could make a very delectable, probably delectable uh, martini. Uh, in our f- refrigerator in this office, uh, one of our interns earlier this summer purchased a pickle beer. Is that something that you would entertain? No. I know what beer you're talking about. I can't remember the name of it right now. They they've been in the fridge for months. Yeah. Nobody is drinking those. No, no. And you know where else I always always see those in the mix a six section oh, yeah. at the grocery store. Oh yeah. Where you get to like mix, you know, grab whichever singles you want. The, the singles are here because the the beer is like you know it 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 hasn't sold in a while and they don't want it to they don't want to sell anybody bad beer. So they need to get a, they need to get rid of it. Is that the is the that pickle the pickle beer is always available? Is 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 the pick six just the area where they have the expiring beers that they just need to offload? Pretty much. No one want yeah. no one needs six pickle beers. You just need one. Yeah. Just to just say like, whoa, this is crazy. Try this. Yeah. I, no, I don't want a pickle beer. That that's 
No. I don't like any flavored <laughs> beers at this point. I just don't like beer at this point. No beer? I'm just, I've been struggling with my beers lately. You, those $18 electric jellyfishes weren't going down like sweet, sweet water? Stop. <laughs> I, I refuse. I refuse to drink electric jellyfish at this point. I respect it. I respect it. Uh-huh. But it may, like one of those makes me feel like I just died. <laughs> it gives me a headache. I get all sniffly. It's like I got like uh, the plague. Yeah. <sighs> those IPAs will get you, man. It's not good. Yeah. Um, there's something that was on Twitter today. And it's something that's the reason I have it on today's rundown is because it's been going through my head a lot lately. I'm trying to finagle a way where I can get cowboy boots without looking like I'm doing too much. And and most importantly, I want to look natural while getting them. Um, and there was an article, I don't even know who did it, but it, it was talking about how cowboy boots are becoming just so popular among the uh the ladies out there. Among the glitterati? Yeah. <sighs> like the uh, excuse me? The glitterati? The glitterati? What's the glitterati? <laughs> just the, the famous people, the just, celebs. Just the famous, luxurious the people. Be- the beautiful people. Yeah. yeah. Last night, Sa- this is completely off topic. Last <laughs> night, Sally was putting some stuff on her cuticles. And she was like, Will, you put some stuff on your cuticles. She knows that I don't take care of my nails or uh-huh. nail beds or anything like that at all. And I was like, no, no, no. I don't need that. It's a waste of time. You're wasting it on me. And she was like, Will, it's luxurious. And I looked over and I was like, Really? <laughs> Like, how luxurious. <laughs> Suddenly, I got cuticle oil on, and I'm just like loving life. And yeah, I'm like, yeah. if Sally ever wants me to do anything in life at this point, she's got to be like, well, it's pretty luxurious to do that. And I'm like, wait, <laughs> maybe I do want to do the dishes right now. Yeah, it, that's a little hack for you. <sighs> well, now they say the cowboy boot silhouette dominating in 2022 is a little less wild, wild west, and a lot more Casey Musgraves as she was an 80s country music star. The present day iteration embraces the baseline elements of western riding shoes, pointed toe, slanted heel, and up uh, high chiseled top, while bringing in traits of the on-trend fashion like metallics, abstract patterns, unique heel forms, and even a vibrant Y2K-inspired color or two. The cool cowgirl aesthetic has been adopted by Gen Z and millennials alike who utilize the eccentric boot to add a jolt of excitement to their personal style choices. Just look on TikTok where the piece is having a major moment to date. And I think all these numbers are total bullshit most of the time anyway. It says to date, there's been 379.7 million views of the hashtag cowboy boots, but that's just a tiny piece of iconic uh, footwear's longstanding place in the fashion world, which spans generations, styles, and aesthetics ahead. Let's dive into what this trend really means. And then they go into all of it. And on here, they, they are using photos from all over, the, like all over the map. I mean, it's current people wearing cowboy boots. It's Princess Diana wearing cowboy boots. Yeah. It's your <clears throat> Emratas, which have you heard that she might be dating Brad Pitt? <sighs> what? Saw this on TikTok. It's a theory. It's a theory. It's a theory, but they have allegedly been spotted together okay. twice. All right. Twice, which I, I would I'm be, shipping it. I'm shipping it. I am Love shipping this. hard. Love it. It's giving yes. <laughs> it's giving yes. <laughs> Still don't know how to use it's giving, but we're trying. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Yeah, get it. Go get it. Emily and Brad. You're a Texan through and through. Through and through. Born You've, and raised. Born and raised here. Do you, uh, do you, I'm going to assume that you own cowboy boots. I think the question I need to ask is how many pairs do you have? Yeah, I own... Three pairs of cowboy boots. What What are the different use, uses for each? Okay. Or are, do, and if two have the same use, then I understand. Yeah. So so I have two pair of very traditional cowboy boots from that are that are from a Texas brand, Luke Casey, that have really tall shafts and Western heels, and th- those are, you know, if you've listened to Club Cool over you over the years, <clears throat> you know we're kind of constantly on a search for finding denim that we like that works well on top of these classic high shafted cowboy boots. There's no answer. There's no correct answer. And there's not really a good answer. It's it what what I've kind of discovered is that it actually boils down to like body type, mm-hmm. which applies to the women's version as well because I, I'm just going to I I look, I'm a short king out here, so I'm I, I don't mean to 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 be salty or or um you know, talk down about the the short women. This cowboy boot trend is going to be hard if you're short. See, I have short legs. I've got somewhat – my legs aren't super stocky, but they're stocky enough that you can yeah. classify them as stocky. And th- this is where I get worried. Oh, sorry. I just had a drink of my kombucha. It did not go down well. Uh, pff, boy, we're just – we're all about fermenting today. I'm, yeah, my gut health has been <laughs> trash lately. I'm trying to get back on it. 
Um, maybe I mean, you do need a pickle market. Why do you think? Why do you, maybe I do? Why do you think it's more difficult on the shorts? So it's just it, because and this applies for men and women, but for for these for a boot with a really tall shaft like this, if you are not long, it's going to make you look short. And then anything that you wear with it, whether it's jeans for guys or like a dress or a skirt for girls, it's going to those those things are going to need to like be in proportion to the boot. They're going to need to be kind of juxtaposed mm-hmm. in a way. Or else everything's gonna get really squatty real quick. Yeah, and that is that is also what I have like that that because and the reason that I can say this is because it's what, one of the things that I've pinpointed with like dudes that always look good in cowboy boots. They're always tall as hell. Yeah, it's all it's the Mark Weistrax of the world that yeah. can like that where the the shaft of a cowboy boot is actually only hitting them like kind of low calf. Instead of mid or high calf. Yeah, I'm worried that like I'm going to bend my knee and you're going to be able to see the front of the cowboy boot sticking out of my <laughs> jeans and I look like an idiot. Yeah. And so all the it, boots that I like though, and I don't know what this says about me, the boots that I like don't have the tall shaft on them. It's all kind of the shorter ones. Okay. But I well, still that, don't know what to wear these with. Like well, I have so, nothing. So so that's for for guys anyway. That that is actually the fix is to is to go not traditional and get a boot with all of the Western trappings. Go roper. But but that have a shorter shaft or more of a Chelsea boot style shaft. So the third pair of boots that I have is from a brand called Yucatan, and they are like when I'm wearing them with with uh, with pants, they look like a Western boot. But the the shaft is only about four inches, five inches high. So it's and and um and you know Tacovas, whether you love them or hate them, actually makes a really nice version of this boot that's basically like a side zip, and is much shorter than a traditional boot. But they still look very, you know, they've still got the sharper toe and the Western heel and the little, the the kind of the stitch detailing on the toe, all those things that kind of like, like, like make the boot feel Western instead of workwear. Yeah. I'm on to covers um, right now and they've got different, I mean, they've got different heights. The Dean is what you're talking about, I believe that has a little zip on the side. I think that's right. Yeah. Then they have their Roper boots that have the 10 inch shaft and then they have their straight up cowboy boots, which yep. are the 12 inch shafts. I don't think two inches off is enough to like allow me to really thrive in these things. Yeah. So, uh, but, but once you get the, the Western boots, it's really just about how Western you want to go. You know, See, I don't want to go that Western at all, but like, I feel like, I feel like the, uh, like if guys can't just toss these on with like, you know, a dress and look cute in them. No, they cannot do that. Girls can, <laughs> girls can just toss it on and they yeah, can toss yeah. it on with anything and it can be like, Oh, that's cool. They mix in some cowboy boots. Like, I like that. That's fun us guys like we have a very l- like limited and narrow scope of looking like put together in these otherwise i just worry that i'm gonna look like some idiot yeah you kind of uh, you know i mentioned uh the the lead singer of midland y- you kind of need the you know shameless plug you need like the howler brothers mm-hmm. seeger kind of uh deep eddie cabaret like regular at the bar mm-hmm. look here to pull this off which is kind of vintage kind of 70s Maybe you got a mustache going, but to, to do it casually, you, you need like, you know, you basically need kind of like beat up jeans, a vintage tee and like a trucker hat on. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And so I just it, don't have it, that in my arsenal currently. And so, so if, if, if you don't do that, then you're going a little, I feel like you're going a little bit more traditional with it, which means maybe you want something like a pearl snap or a flannel or like, you know, that, you, that gets a little bit more kind of. Texas country instead of California country. Mm-hmm. And so, because there, you know, there's, you, you, there are other ways to wear a cowboy boot, but I think if you, if, if, if you, if you get rid of any other of like the Western flair, then why get cowboy boots? Yeah, you're right. Right. That's like, fair. Like you, you kind of want to lean into the, that's fair to the cowboyishness, the cowboy cowboy-esque nature of, of them. I mean, I've just now started wearing jeans more and now now staring down the barrel of the gun that's me wearing jeans that work with cowboy boots like that. I'm, I'll get there in 10 years at the rate that I'm going. It's not <laughs> going well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I think there's a world where you can... I mean, you know, let's see. This is going to be the longest we've made it into an episode. I'm sorry to break it. I'm sorry we have to. I was literally just thinking like I, we didn't so, have to got, do it. We, to. we didn't get there. Sorry, I have to. I even thought like 44 minutes I could in. probably pl- I could probably pluck something from them from my wish list today, but I'm not going to. It's basically like we haven't mentioned them. It's been it's been so deep into the episode. But even Amelie on door <laughs> has released like Western denim pearl snap shirts. And they even did like the nudie shirt with the, the, the embroidered yoke and all of that type of stuff. So it, 
that some of the other stuff in that realm can work, whether it's like overshirts. Does it work with carpenter pants? Stone washed, stone washed denim. I, I don't think. See, I don't think it works with carpenter pants. See, that's and pants. that's that that kills me because that's the yeah. closest thing I got right now. Now, if, if if you're gonna do carpenter pants, you need more of like a workwear boot. That's that that's yeah. just you need more of like a of uh you need something a little chunkier, thicker, lug sold type type mm-hmm. vibe. Mm-hmm. <sighs> so, I just don't think it's in the cards for me. I'm I've been I've been just window shopping cowboy boots for the past like week or so. And with no actual intention of of getting any, what, because what, I know what does the wife think about your pursuit for for cowboy boots? She doesn't really care. Yeah, uh, she, I think if I was from Texas, she'd think it was weird. I didn't already have boots, mm-hmm. but like I also grew up with a dad who was really into Western stuff. Like, yeah. and he would, you know, he loved Montana. He loves Montana. Um, you know, it's kind of surprising that I don't have more. Like, I don't know. My, my, I guess my way of being Western is that I I really enjoy looking at like Western art. I did. I did get a couple Mark Majori prints uh, when they did the print sale. Nice. Uh, because my dad does not listen to uh, retail therapy. I don't believe. Uh, I did get him one of those for a gift, not realizing that it was going to take like three months for them to ship. Okay. But uh, yeah, I, d- I did one of those, and I just dressing Western. I, I feel like a fraud. Whereas yeah, like just kind of enjoying Western it, yeah. stuff within yeah. my house, I don't feel like as much of a fraud because, you know, I don't have to actually like, it's not my personality. It's the personality of my apartment, not my, uh, not my actual, you know, DNA. Yeah. Just feels better that way. <sighs> yeah. But, um, but, but it's, it's, I, I, I like when Western trends in fa- trends in fashion, um, and, it, and it's kind of been there for a few years on the men's side, I would actually say. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's not surprising to see some of that uh, kind of play play out into the to the women's sector as well. I'm I'm here for the uh, the cowboy boots on on the ladies, especially. I mean, yeah, pretty much definitely. All the time. And also, by the way, to, just to 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 make it work for for shorter men and women, like I said, I think the rule applies applies for both. Just get shorter boots. Yeah, the the super tall kind of like very fashiony versions of them i think are, are are limiting in the in their versatility and for for who can best pull them off yeah yeah i think that's fair well before we get into our wish list today let's hear from my friends over at Babel. for most of us learning a second language in high school or college wasn't exactly a high point in our academic careers me personally i took about 12 years of spanish and uh, i'm definitely not fluent and i definitely could use some brushing up i recently brushed up on Babel, and it definitely helped Now, thanks to Babbel, the language learning app that sold more than 10 million subscriptions, there's an addictively fun and easy way to learn a new language. Whether you're traveling abroad, connecting in a deeper with family, or you just have some free time, Babbel teaches bite-sized language lessons that you'll actually use in the real world. Uh, I'm actually using Babbel currently uh, before our Italy trip. I want to know a few pleasantries to exchange with people. I'm not trying to learn the language. I'm not trying to become fluent in in a month's time. I'm just trying to, you know, not look like I'm just an ignorant person who doesn't care. Sure. So what have I been doing? Taking a few Italian classes. Smart. No, I will not say anything for you right now because I am very <laughs> bad at it. And I'm sure that my accent is very, very bad. We're going to quiz you on it in a couple of weeks, though. <sighs> Please don't. <laughs> Babbel's 15-minute lessons make it the perfect way to learn a new language on the go. Other language learning apps use AI for their lesson plans, but Babbel... Uh, Their lessons were created by over 100 language experts. Their teaching method has been scientifically proven to be effective. And with Babbel, you can choose 14 different languages, including Spanish, French, Italian, and German. Plus, their speech recognition technology helps you improve your pronunciation and accent. And that's big if you're trying to look autentico. I don't think that's correct. There are so many ways to learn Babbel. That's not in Spanish. Yeah, I mean, Spanish is my background. So I think I was just devolving to that. Well, it's a romance language. so Of course. So in addition to the lessons, you can access podcast games, video stories, and even live classes. Plus, when it comes, it comes with a 20-day money-back guarantee. Start your new language learning journey today with Babbel. Right now, save up to 60% off your subscription. When you go to babbel.com slash scaries, that's babbel.com slash scaries for up to 60% off of your subscription. Babbel, language for life. It's time. Wish list time, baby. <sighs> Who's going first? You're going first. I'm going first. Okay. I'm making you go first today. All right. Um, I've got an imminent cop, and then I've got then I've got a wish list at addition as well. Um, so my imminent cop, we talked about these a couple of weeks ago, a few weeks ago. Uh, people came out of the woodwork talking about how crazy I was for not having them. Uh, I do have a trip that requires multiple flights coming up soon. I am going to bite the bullet on a pair of AirPods Pro. 
Let's go. This week. Sally is actively, actively trying to get me to get some AirPod Maxes. Some Max, yeah. It's, she, yeah. it's the, the campaign that she has been doing is insane. I mean, she, she wants me to get them so badly, mainly so she can take over my old Bose headphones. Okay. Which I like my old, my, my Bose over ear. Why uh, doesn't, why doesn't she get the AirPods Max? Because she doesn't want to pay for them and she would rather have <laughs> me pay for them for myself and then hand down my Bose to her. Okay. Got it. She got also it. knows that I am more likely, I mean, she's, she's, you know, she's in the medical profession. She's uh -huh. got some student loans to pay off. Right. I don't think if she, if she walked in one day with some AirPod Maxes, I'd be like, huh, <laughs> look at that. Huh. They uh, look, I, I'm. I'm not going to fall victim to it because they are so expensive and I just don't see myself using them that often. But I, but, but, you know, you called it out a few weeks ago and I have seen them everywhere and I got to be real that the influencers look awesome in them. They sure do. They are on a campaign. Apple must be f sending them for free to all of these people and they look dope, but I'm just going to go with the pros because I don't need over ear headphones. I actually prefer the pods and all I need is a little bit of noise canceling and the price you know, I thought they were going to be like 250, 270. Everywhere outside of Apple, like Target and wherever, they all have them for like 180 bucks. Oh. So, see, uh, the only reason I don't have AirPods um is because I cannot edit audio for oh, yeah, my job yeah. with the AirPods. It yeah. doesn't register the stuff, and so yes. I've never been able to use it very well. And then I've got I've got my trusty old Raycons that I use for my uh, my mm -hmm. my sweat sessions. Sure, the, the, it's just because they stay in my ears better. But yeah. I'm also I'm also operating under I've never had any AirPods outside of the very first edition that I didn't really fall in love with. So, okay, and now uh, for my wish list edition, let's pull these bad boys up. As a uh, as a follower of fashion, you know th this is something that routinely kind of like comes comes on and off of my wish list. Okay. Um and it it is you know it's a it's a it's a high degree of difficulty. It is sure to get a, a attention when you step out in these things and and I may have have lost power to my computer so I'm not sure that you're going to be able to see them. <laughs> well, at least let me Google. I'll Google but, it myself. But the the Banana Republic of all places has a pair of straight leg leather pants. Oh, dude, leather pants. I mean, that, you've already been on the leather pants wave, but now it's like the 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 leather pants gods that be are now reaching me, okay. which means that it's starting. I mean, that's got to be a real thing if yeah, it's reaching me yeah. now. Yeah, you. Yeah, you. I, I had a pair of. Uh, you know, I've talked quite a bit about about the 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 improvements that that fashion companies and and labels have made in their their faux leather and vegan. "Quote unquote vegan leather." That's our that's our euphemistic name that we're all calling it now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is the vegan leather, and uh, and yeah, I I did last fall. I you know I I dallied, dabbled in a pair of those, which I quite enjoyed. But you know, sometimes you just need the real thing. And and Banana Republic has this pair of black leather pants for dudes. That's a great price compared to all the the the, the wildly expensive versions that are out there. And that's uh th those are those are. You know, we're we're a couple of months away from from any type of cool weather, but those are creeping up my list. Every the degrees are ticking down, and those are creeping up on the list. Man, I'm on here now. These are tasty looking. They are. are they they are. And I, I you know, the, I'm, I feel like right now at the beginning of the fall season, they're probably excluded from all the discount codes that definitely that, are that Banana Republic throws out there. But I, you you know, I I, I got to think like October rolls around, and suddenly those are those are no longer excluded from the from the promos that be. So since these have a 32 inch inseam and I definitely have to get them hemmed, like, can I, is it, is it like taboo of me to be like, Hey, so can I get that extra leather that you guys cut off so I can use it for something? Like, <laughs> nah, just ask hey, the tailor for it. That's a really nice, that's some good, that's probably some nice stuff. Like, yeah. It's, it's like $25 worth of leather. Yeah. Right is there, there any way that I can just keep that? <laughs> I kind of need that. Use it to like patch up a shirt or something. I've got great news. Okay. I've, not, not only am I adding to my wish list today, I'm checking something off of my wish list okay. today. And I'm not checking it off because I didn't want it anymore, like the patchwork tote. I'm checking it off because I actually made it happen. I bought a skateboard. One of the first, I think it was episode two, I, I put on an Arbor Pilsner flagship cruiser board. And just the other day, I thought, you know what? I'm going to support local. I've been wanting to do this forever. And I went down to uh, No Comply, the skate shop downtown. Yeah, hell yeah. Walked in, 
within 20 minutes, I was walking out with a new deck and I got exactly what I wanted. I saw a board. I had been looking on their Instagram for a long time to see what kind of stuff they're getting in. They mm-hmm. finally got in a board that I was like, that's the one. Got to go down there now. Went down there. They hooked it up. Uh, I've been kind of shredding a, a, a little bit lately. Okay. Uh, I've also been, you know, realizing uh, that I'm not as young as I used to be. <laughs> <laughs> but it's been fun. Um, I like. I'm not trying to do any tricks. I'm not trying to go crazy. I'm not trying to bomb any hills. I'm mm-hmm. just trying to cruise around, get some turns in, get my blood flowing a little bit, and feel sure. young again. And yeah. it's kind of working. Are you doing an ollie? Uh, I ollied the other. So that's the the one thing I would like to get better at is just ollieing onto curbs at speed. Right. Okay. Um, and it's it'll come back to me eventually, but it's not it's not coming back quite yet. I did have to bail off the board the other day when I was going down a hill that was a little steeper than I okay. than I thought it would be. Yeah, you just gotta reignite those fast twitch muscles. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I don't know if there's any left, <laughs> which might be the the issue. But the good news is I can finally check this off. I've been having a I have been having a blast on it. I've been probably taking it out once a day and just even if it's just like down the down the road and back it's just yeah. been kind of fun to do it yeah i might i might forget about this in a month's time but i'm enjoying it and what what is the is this deck that you got is it different than like you know what what what, what we had in eighth grade or what you'd skate in like tony hawk's pro skater or whatever yeah like, it's a little different it's more of an old school style shape of the board so okay. it's like more of a fishtail as opposed to anything you can do tricks on this and yep. you can you can go to a skate park on it but like it's not typically made for that and i also got wheels that are much more made for cruising than they are for okay. anything else. Got They're it. very soft wheels. Yeah. That was intentional because I, I just really want to be able to make some some tasty turns out right. there. Right. Right. Um, but what I'm adding, and this is this the reason I, I wanted to check this off the list for us is because what I'm adding to the list is a pair of shoes uh, that are much more made for skateboarding than my uh, shitty vans that I wear all the time now. And what I've added to the list is from Adidas. They have done a collaboration with a company called Fucking Awesome, yeah, which is a, a skate company, and I uh, am interested in them. Unfortunately, if I would have just gotten them the other day when I was looking at them, uh, I could have gotten them right online Yeah, from adidas.com. Mm-hmm. Now, they are sold out in every size after size seven. Have you checked No Comply? Because I know No Comply had these. No, maybe maybe I need to pay them a visit after you, work. You might, today. yeah. I mean, now that you've bought a board from them, they should be backdooring you like all the Nike SBs in no time. I mean, now that I've bought a board <laughs> from them, I am going to be absolutely swagger jacking every <laughs> skater out there all fall, all winter. Like I am so in. I'm gonna yeah, you're gonna yeah, catch yeah. me you, out there wearing like Nija Harris stuff. I'm uh-huh. gonna be like working Houston, doing like just, or, just Nija wanna, Houston. Yeah, sorry, I just want to catch it before um, the listeners do. I uh, I'm going to be wearing all the Carhartt work in progress stuff that exists just because. Mm-hmm. Like I'm just gonna be absolutely commandeering it for the yeah. fall you've yeah you you have broken the barrier to entry and and now you're in now you get to now you get to steeze up but um yeah that i i can't remember what that adidas skate shoe is called the like the model but human made pharrell's brand also just released some uh some models of those and they're really really cool looking. they're cool yeah like i i don't know I'm not, I'm not that into skate shoes overall like they're so chunky they're so i mean and but they're supposed to be yeah. i mean they're supposed to be chunky and heavy so you don't hurt your feet right so that they last a long time everything but i'm realizing like if i'm actually going to do this and i what i really want to be able to do is do this when it's cooler outside and i'm not going to sweat like i do now mm-hmm. and just get get some get some like breaths in yeah and i need some nice shoes to do it with and i think the, uh, these are the ones but i might i might have to go with a different alternative one but yeah maybe i have to go down there and peep this we'll see that's all i got for the wish list this we're shredding. week we're shredding we are shredding did you ever buy your uh todd snyder suit I did, I did. Yeah, it's at the 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 pants are at the tailor right now. Uh, I'm I'm you know speaking of Western wear, I'm kind of putting the finishing touches on on what the rig is going to look like. Mm-hmm. But uh, but yeah, yeah, I'm excited. Are I'm, you dreading I'm, the text that you're about to be getting from me over the next few weeks, where <laughs> I am uh, planning for Italy and asking you questions about my tux, my uh, suit for the the night before the that, wedding? No, that is what I'm here for. I love fielding questions like that. I, I, I'm always happy to to answer stuff like that. Uh, for any listeners too, I'm always, I'm always pretty open in the available in the DMS. If, if you guys uh, have questions as well. So I'm going to annoy the hell out of you when it comes to my, actually, I'm going to do it right after this episode. Cause I have several questions that I need to get out of the way, but yeah, yeah. It should be a very picturesque wedding. I'll, I'll definitely get a gram off for this, for this Western inspired, uh, suit that I'll, I'm going to try to try to throw down. So maybe it'll make its way on retail.pod. Ooh, we'll see. We'll see. All right. Well, it's been fun. Um, to anyone uh, out there who uh, made it to the end, thank you. 
we've been having fun on these. And uh, if you are interested in watching this on YouTube, again, the new new link to the new channel is right in the description of this episode. Go check it out. You can also just go over to willdefreeze.substack.com and check out the listener guide there as we will have everything there for you, including a link to the new video. But unless you got anything else, Barrett, I think it's time to hit the road. That's it. It's all for me. Let's go skate.